What is up guys, welcome to my season review of Arrow Season 6. So this was not the best season of Arrow, it, it had its ups and downs, but it never reached the heights of Season 1, 2, or 5, but also never reached the lows of Season 3 or 4. So as always, I'm going to be going over my standout episodes of the season, and then I'm going to be reviewing everything about the season. Before that though, make sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe, as well as follow me on Twitter for better daily updates on my videos, as well as daily polls on the Arrowverse. With that in mind, let's go over the review for Arrow Season 6. So the standout episodes of Season 6 include Episode 2 titled Tribute, Episode 5 titled Deathstroke Returns, Episode 13 titled The Devil's Greatest Trick, Episode 18 titled Fundamentals, which was the best episode of the season, Episode 21 titled Docket Number 11 73 as well as the season finale, Episode 23 titled Life Sentence. So now we're going to get into the review of Season 6. So, the season began on a really big low note, in my opinion. I said in my review for episode 1 that I liked the episode, but that was way back when I didn't really know what I was doing with my videos, and I didn't really think about it, because I really don't like the first episode of the season because of what it does to, episode, to season 5. So, season 5 ended in the best season finale ever, in my opinion, as well as a lot of other people's opinions. In fact, most people agree the season 5 finale was the best, but a big thing about it that was so great was the cliffhanger ending. It promised to uh, shorten the cast of Team Arrow just because that was a big common complaint for season 5. In fact, it was my only complaint for season 5, or was my biggest complaint, so I was excited for them to um, kill off a couple cast members, especially Felicity and Diggle, because they also promised a soft reboot for or in season 6, so that would have fit really nicely, but then season 6 came out, and um, the explosion affected a total of 3 people, and only 2 of them Two of them were main characters, only one of them died. The three people, the three um, members of our uh, good guys, I guess, that it affected were Samantha, Diggle, and Thea. And then Thea was, Thea was in a coma. She woke up like six episodes later. Diggle was had this arm tremor that was fixed a couple episodes la later. And Samantha was really the only one that affected anything. But it felt like the only reason they did that was for Oliver to become a father. So this conclusion to the cliffhanger, to the awesome cliffhanger of season six, was extremely disappointed because not to, not only did it kill off like not a lot of characters, it didn't kill off a uh, kill off a single main character. Not a single main character died in this explosion, which just made me feel so sad for um the for the show. Just because if they had if if they were think if they really did that that explosion, if they had the balls to do that explosion, then they had to have the balls to kill a character off because there's why else would they do that? So that definitely gets me a little a little annoyed, and it definitely brings down the score of the season. Just that opening of the season where nobody died except for Samantha and maybe like um, Artemis or whatever. It it's really disappointed. In fact, it's one of the most disappointing things from any beginning of any season of the Arrowverse, followed only by Flashpoint. And then, a for a couple episodes, Diggle was the Green Arrow, which, I don't remember, I, I haven't, that was a while ago, and it was only for, like, three episodes, but I remember it was so boring when he was the Green Arrow, it was terrible, so that's three episodes, I think, that really got uh, brought down by Green by, D by Diggle being the Green Arrow, but I think two of those episodes were actually the Deathstroke episodes, so those are two gr pretty great episodes, so I don't think it mattered that much, especially when it was only three episodes, but the Deathstroke episodes were a definite, a definite highlight of the season, it wasn't, they weren't the highlight, they were a highlight, because they were great, they really opened up the door for a Deathstroke spinoff show that doesn't seem to be happening, but at least they did that, those uh, those episodes were definitely good, especially the one that I, I said as a standout of the season, episode 5, titled Deathstroke Returns, but those were great, another thing that happened in those episodes were was the Vigilante reveal, now both the reveal and his subsequent death where I thought were done so badly just because the reveal it was done badly because he took off his mask and it was a, it was an actor that we'd never seen before. It was a character we saw before, but he was recast so the reveal felt like nothingness and then his death felt like really rushed and came out of nowhere and I it, it sucked because he just got a, like he just became a good character in that episode and then they killed him off. It really really sucked. It was just like how they killed uh, spoiler, I'm not going to say it, but um that was definitely not a good reveal or subsequent death. That was that was one of two death scenes in the season. I'm pretty sure, and that was that one was bad. The other one was great, and I will talk about that at, like at the not maybe not at the end, but later in the review when I get to the end of the season. 
So throughout the first 12 or 13 episodes of the season, uh, I had a big problem with those first 12, 13 episodes just because the main villain was Caden James. Now Caden James, the actor who played him, um, I forgot his name, but he was great. He was great. He was a great actor. He was great in the role, but he just did not work at all for a main villain because he's a hacker. And that's not something I want to see as a main villain. And sure, he didn't turn out to be the main villain. I didn't think he was going to be the main villain because uh, Richard Dragon or Ricardo Diaz was going to was confirmed to be the main villain. But the fact that he was really the main villain for half the season, even more than half the season, because he was the main villain for 13 episodes, well, Diaz was the main villain for 9 episodes. So that really, really sucked in my opinion. He was not a good main villain for those 13 episodes. And that definitely brought down the season, and I felt like, I feel like they should not have done that at all. So those first 13 episodes, until episode 13, which was The Devil's Greatest Trick, until then, the season did not feel right to me. But then episode 13 really turned everything around, and it started to get actually really good. Or actually, not maybe not episode 13, but I think episode 13, when Ricardo Diaz became the main villain, was the switch the season needed, but the season didn't really get great until episode 17 which was brothers in arms which wasn't a wasn't a standout episode but it was still a pretty good episode and it really switched out switched around the season because after that they had like a, a five episode or basically seven episode winning streak but before that there was the team arrow civil war which was something i was actually pretty excited for but the way they handled it was just not good enough the arguments between the two the two teams wasn't very wasn't very satisfactory to the civil war I didn't feel like there would be a civil war really like it didn't really work that well especially when you have characters that you've been that you've seen for six years even though they're not 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 all three of them are the best characters but they, you've seen them for six years against characters you've seen for only a year maybe two so it it, it just doesn't hold up they, sh they should have shuffled the teams in my opinion so this arrow team arrow civil war just wasn't done very well and the subsequent split up of the team also, it didn't feel right, even though I like the fact that Oliver was by himself for a couple episodes, it still didn't feel right. So, um, I am glad that they came back together at the end of the season, which actually came, which actually um, brought a bunch of really uh, satisfactory uh, moments between especially Oliver and Renee. But back here in episode 13, um, 14, or like episode 11, it was really episode 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, where um, the split between Team Arrow, or the two Team Arrows, as well as the Civil War, was just not done all too well. But like I said, ap after episode 13, really it was the switch between Diaz and and uh, Caden James, or the other way around, Caden James and Diaz, that really brought the season up to what it should have been throughout the rest of the season, because Diaz, even though he's not the greatest villain, he is so much better than Caden James, so I don't think it's because um, Diaz, I don't think it's because Diaz came up that it became better, but it was because Caden James was gone that the season got a lot better, because Diaz... Ricardo Diaz definitely wasn't the best main villain of Arrow season or, or ever just because he did not get developed enough now I think the reason they did that is because they're gonna he's gonna be the main villain again in the next season Which I'm a little disappointed by because I just want a new take on a, on a villain the next season But who knows maybe he won't be but either way for this season standing on its own He did not get developed enough in a bunch of ways one his backstory He got one episode telling his whole backstory and that just wasn't enough Looking at the past villains, like um, Mal the best ones, Malcolm Merlin got a lot of backstory. Slade Wilson got an insane amount of backstory. He had a whole season. They had a whole season and a half, or a whole two seasons, to flesh out his backstory. So Slade Wilson was a character definitely with the best backstory. And then Prometheus definitely got a lot of backstory to um, to um, to push up his motivations, to show his motivations. Not as much as Slade, but I think that Diaz just should have gotten more backstory and development as a character because, like, he for me, he was that he didn't he just didn't get developed enough as a character. And the two worst things that did not get developed enough were one, his fighting ability, because in the comics, and I've said this so many times, but in the comics, he's like one of the best fighters in the DC universe, or at least R Richard Dragon is. And they could have, they should have adapted that into the show. Here, he's just not as good as Green Arrow, which in the comics, he's a much better fighter than Green Arrow. So that's a little disappointing. And I feel like they could have done something with his fighting ability. Arrow's really great with fight scenes, so they could have done something, but they didn't for some reason because they only had like nine episodes or ten episodes to flesh out his character when they could have had so much more just for him to fight 
and see his fighting ability, maybe his backstory, how he learned to fight. But they didn't do that. But really, the worst thing about him, about his development, and he's definitely not a. None of this was terrible, but none of this was great either. But the worst thing about his underdevelopment was the fact that his rivalry with uh, Oliver Queen wasn't developed like at all. So the rivalry between uh, Ricardo Diaz and Oliver Queen, like I said, not developed in the slightest. It felt manufactured. It felt Oliver's hate for Ricardo Diaz didn't feel all too natural. I mean, obviously it makes sense. Diaz did take over his city. But until, like, the last episode, it just didn't feel real, the hate between the two, because they didn't get enough episodes to develop that hate. Now, I know I'm ranting a lot about Diaz, but he's not a bad villain, in my opinion. I thought he was fine or actually good, especially near the end of the season. Like, he had a lot of great moments, like, scary moments. He had a lot of great fight scenes. And even though he didn't really get his character developed at all, episode 19 got him pretty fleshed out of the character, but not fleshed out enough in my opinion, so definitely, he definitely was not a bad villain, he wasn't great either, I'd say he is the fourth best villain in the Arrowverse, just like this season is the fourth best season of the Arrowverse, because really, most seasons are defined by their villain, so Diaz, not the best villain, but also not the worst. Like I said at the beginning of the review, this season had a lot of ups and downs, and the big up of the season was in between episode 17 and 23, because every single episode, save for episode 22, between episode 17 and 23, had a score higher than 9, and two of them had a score of 10 out of 10, and another one had a score of 9 out of a 9.9 .9 out of 10 for my reviews and my ratings, so that's incredible, that's an amazing stretch of episodes, again, save for episode 22, which wasn't a bad episode either, so even though the streak was, uh, a streak with higher than 9 was, was really 5, it, these streaks of great episodes really lasted from episode 17 to 23, which is a lot of episodes, a lot of great episodes in a row, so that's definitely a high point of the season, I don't think that was because of Diaz though, even though that, those were the episodes where Diaz really became a main villain, it wasn't because of him those episodes were great, it was because of other things that played into it that those episodes were really great so again Diaz was a good villain not uh, not great though but either way that stretch of episodes where each episode except for one has higher rating than um, 9 out of 10 and three of them are like almost half of them or actually most more than half or almost half of the seven have ratings higher than 9.9 .9 out of 10 that's an incredible stretch of episodes and I really gotta give props to the Arrow writers and the guys who made Arrow obviously for that incredible ending to the season where I don't got to give them props to the, the first uh, 16 episodes where it was really shaky and it, it wasn't very, it, it had a lot of ups and downs in terms of the first 16 episodes, but the last 8 episodes or 7 episodes were definitely really great. This season saw the departure of two characters, two main characters, who have been around since season one, and that is Thea and Quentin. One of them was done better than the other, but I thought both of the departures were done pretty well. Thea's uh, departure wasn't incredible or anything, but it was a pretty good departure from the show. I feel like she hasn't done anything since, like, season four, so it's, I'm glad she's... I'm not glad she's gone, but I think... I I'm not sad about it either, and Quinta's departure was definitely really heart-wrenching, but it also felt right because he also hasn't done much yet, but that death scene for him, even though we didn't see him die really, was definitely done really well, and both departures were great. The The only departure that wasn't great, and he, he, he isn't a main character, but it was Vigilante, but um, Kate and James' departure too was um, welcome, definitely. I'm glad he died in that scene where Ricardo Diaz killed him, was a great scene, so all in all this season, not the best season, but nowhere near the worst. So now to talk about the sore subject of any Arrow review, really, because whenever I talk about this subject negatively, I get so many dislikes on those videos because a lot of people love it, I don't like it at all, and that's Elicity, and that's something that Season 5 definitely, um, definitely, definitely, definitely benefited from, was the lack of Elicity. This, episode, this season definitely didn't have as much of it at season three or four but it definitely had a lot of it and their episodes like episode nine were really dragged down by elicity in general elicity wasn't terrible in this season but in my opinion it's just um it's it's just like automatically bad because elicity because because um felicity is not black canary Dinah Drake or Dinah Laura Lance she's not one of those characters so the relationship between Oliver and Felicity is just bad automatically but it didn't really take up much of this season there were a couple episodes that bothered me a couple episodes that really got dragged down by it but not 
too many episodes. I'm really trying to dance around this just because I know a lot of people don't like it when I talk about it negatively, but it did bother me in a couple episodes in this season, so it definitely did not help the score of the season, and it might have just dragged it down by a little tiny bit. So I reviewed every single episode from this season, all 23 episodes on this channel, and I gave each each episode a score, and the average of all those scores, all 23 episodes, bringing them together and dividing by 23, the score of the season, or the average score of the season, is 8.43, but I will lower the score a little bit to 8.3, just because I feel like that it's definitely the last couple of episodes that really brought up the score of the season. But I feel like there are a lot of a lot of things about the season that I definitely do not like, which is why I had to bring it down to 8.3. But that's only one point less, and 8.3 I don't think is a bad score for a season. Again, it's not an incredible score just because this is not an incredible season. But it's all it is a good score in my opinion, which is what the season is. It's good. So uh, let me know what you thought about this season in the comments down below. And uh, like I said earlier, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.